Like most of you, the B-Movie Maniacs wonder what happens when you're not safe and forget to use cinematic protection. In some cases, you end up with twins, similar movies released in the same year. Other times, you wind up with the love child of Pulgasari and Josh Kirby Time Warrior, as is the case for our movie tonight. Join us as we discuss the adventures of Galgameth on B Movie Mania! Welcome to the crossroads of camp, the bastion of the bazaar, the place where low budgets meet high praise. Yes, it's B Movie Mania! And now, B-Movie Maniacs, here are your hosts, the cream of the crap, the connoisseurs of cult, your cinematic creepy uncles, Mike Hayes, Jason Hulls, and Crazy Chris Hudson. Ah, all right, uh, hello and welcome to B-Movie Mania. I'm your host this evening, Crazy Chris Hudson, and with me tonight are a couple blackbirds, Michael Hayes, <laughs> <Ka-ka>. <laughs> wow, <laughs> and Jason Holes. Blackbird, blackbird, blackbird. <laughs> what a fucking weird thing to have in that movie, huh? <laughs> God. Oh, oh, boy. So, tonight's movie is The Adventures of Galgameth. It's a, it's a charming kids movie from 1996. The screenplay was written by Michael and Jelly. I guess I hope I'm pronouncing that right, but you might recognize that if you've uh, if you've read up. Or you might recognize his name if you've read up on the IMDb entries for Battlestar Galactica. I guess he was pretty. He wrote a few episodes of that and was a big producer behind the the scenes. And the original. The, no, no, the remake. I should have said no. Like, yeah, yeah. He worked on the remake. The remake, really? Yeah, yeah. The yeah. He was like a co-producer or something. Wrote several episodes. How is that hard to believe? Huh. You've seen the Adventures of Galgameth, right? It's a it's a dark political thriller, just like Battlestar Galactica is. Uh, yeah, I guess I shouldn't be surprised, but I I somehow am. <laughs> but uh, but he was working off a story by Simon Sheen, and I want to talk about Simon Sheen for a moment. Uh, I don't know if you guys are very familiar with uh, Mr. Sheen, but he didn't really have a very long career in Hollywood. Oh, um, oh yeah, Tiger Blood, right? Uh, like, yeah, maybe he's winning. That's <laughs> I know he is that it. <laughs> I know he did the Three Ninjas movies for Kid Ninjas or something. I don't know. I'm not really a big fan of those, but uh, I think he's got a pretty good explanation for why he didn't have a very long career. Uh, it's basically because it didn't even really start until he escaped North Korea. Oh, so, wait a yeah, minute. So Simon Sheen is really South Korean filmmaker Shin sang ok oh, oh, he had to change it, otherwise Kim yeah. Jong would be uh, pissy. It'd be out to get him, yeah. So he's the guy that was kidnapped by Kim Jong Il and forced to make movies for the godless communists. <laughs> Check out our Polgasari episode. Yes, we did Polgasari, I think, last season. So, and we did a book report. Yeah, yeah, great episodes. I urge everyone to listen to those because you'll probably get a lot more out of this episode because it's pretty much the exact same movie as Polgasari. It's just remade for American children. Mm-hmm. Ah, so let's go right into quick takes. Quick takes! <laughs> Jay, since I introduced Mike first, I'll let you do your quick take first. Okay. Um, you know, I remember, I think it was in conversation after the last episode, when you'd announced this, I think we'd shut off the recorders. I don't know if it's on the episode, where Mike says, Chris... Don't Josh Kirby this thing. <laughs> <laughs> I think you might have Josh Kirby this thing. <laughs> you know, it's only been a couple of weeks, but I don't remember Mike saying that at all. Oh, I did yeah, say. he did. He did. <laughs> oh, I, boy. Oh, I boy. I felt like I was in a Galga meth lab. Oh. 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 Yeah. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> Mike, how do you feel about this movie? I, I feel like... Like like someone beat the shit out of a Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles movie, <laughs> <laughs> and then and then this is what happened. I don't know. <laughs> 
that's not really a, a quick take. I don't know. It's, <laughs> that's pretty quick. It's it's a it's a rubber suit thing, and it's fucking. It just looks like someone scrubbed the paint off of a traditional. Oh, fuck me! I can't that's even talk. That's very true. <laughs> yeah, I don't know, Chris. What'd you think, know, guys? <laughs> yeah. Um. You know, it was. I really wish I had a chance to uh, go back and watch Polgasari after I watched this one because I recognized a few of the scenes. Like he threw in some of the big events from Polgasari, so it's definitely the same movie. Just <laughs> oh my god, oh my god. Yeah, Ugh. I do actually so. remember when I was watching it. I remember uh, quite a few of the plot points happening. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I couldn't. I, I don't think I could list them off from memory. But I was, I was watching it. I was like, "Oh, yep, yep, yep." Honestly, that was my favorite thing with the movie. Like, there was very little enjoyment I had, <laughs> except for remembering parts from Polgasari. Yeah, yeah. The comparison, I think, was the most amusing part. Yeah. Yeah. Well, we'll get into that at some point, I'm sure, in the episode. But um, my favorite part of, of both Polgasari and the Adventures of Galgameth is when the young prince is pulled out of bed for a midnight joust. Hi. Is it that time already? <laughs> for no real reason. Yeah. Well, it's time. Uh, <laughs> God. None of, like, nothing in this movie is, has any, like, context to it. Like, the entire movie is out of context, I think. There's just, like, I, my notes literally, the fourth thing I have is, wait, is this not a dream? Because I assumed what was happening at the yeah. beginning of this movie was a fucking dream. Oh, oh, me too. That's the exact same note I had. It was no dream. No. Oh, no. It lasted the whole hour and a half. <laughs> <laughs> well, what what was what made you think that? Just the, the actual shot? I thought the shots were a little odd. And the, the cutting back and forth, because you've got uh, Prince Davin hiding in a room, and then there's knights marching to get him, and the yeah. whole like back and forth felt very awkward. It seemed like it was supposed to be a nightmare, and then Davin, our hero, uh, says all his words really badly. <laughs> so I thought it, that made it to seem awkward, and so that was kind of my thing. Yeah, you got these knights marching up to the armory to pull this kid out of there, then they throw him on a horse, and he's got some very poor wisecracks. He says. <laughs> And then he's on a horse, and then, like, he doesn't wake up. He, the movie just keeps going, because <laughs> it's the reality. Oh, my God. And But we're really setting Davin up for greatness by the end, because you show a kid who doesn't know how to joust in neck one. <laughs> You know, damn sure he knows how to learn to joust at some point in this movie. Oh, God. He yeah, sure he does. does. <laughs> Somehow, the kid knocks him off, right? He knocks him off the horse, or right? Because he's injured. Yeah, the kid the kid fumbles off of a horse and then accidentally knocks out the other knight. Right, and it turns out to be the king, who is his father. And his dad is super proud of this exhibition, and makes everyone clap for him. I think the king is one of those parents whose child can do no wrong. I really would hate to like see them out at a restaurant and the kid, Davin, just throws a tantrum because it's everyone else's <laughs> fault. Yeah. That's kind of the impression I got from this because Davin is so brave. You're supposed to think he's super nice and like supportive, but eh, maybe enabling yeah, yeah. is a better That's word. That's not the impression I got. So, so Chris, you're, you're the only one of us who has like grown children. I want to know at what age you decided to teach your children a blood sport and then see who <laughs> who would kill you or not. Well, uh, I'm just going to say that uh, Jay uh, kind of knows a little of this because he has littler children, but his uh -huh. kids are reaching the age where I think it's appropriate to teach your children blood sports. <laughs> Yeah, well, my son just turned three. Yeah, uh, and I started so, my kids when they were four. Yeah, it's about right. Four years old, so yep, huh. never too early to learn, Mike. No. Okay, well, well, get Jay, get ready for a, an actual life-threatening wound <laughs> because because apparently you don't want to when you're teaching your kids a blood sport, you don't take any safety precautions, <laughs> even though it's just for a, a test. <laughs> like, this kid, Davin, stabs his dad in the in the, the shoulder with the jousting stick, whatever it is, Lance, and it penetrates. He's bleeding. Yeah. It, like, oh, literally, yeah. he has to see the doctor, because he's hurt very badly. 
You mean LL Cool J? <laughs> yes. The obvious villain of the film? <laughs> the Black Knight. Well, Jay, it's funny that you called uh, the king an enabler because he enables LL Cool J to poison the king. <laughs> Setting up the, the getting the king out of the way and, and setting up the real conflict in this story. Good evening, my lord. I pray your injury a swift passing. Don't tell me you're treating me. Oh, son, you're standing on my favorite toes. Uh, and I'm so glad we're just getting through this because, <laughs> man, it, it, it's, it's slow. But just so people actually know what we're talking about, the villain who's clearly the villain. Yeah. Well, you could he just may as well have written villain across the front of his shirt. Yes. Um his name is LL. So I will refer to him as LL Cool J. Yes. It's a great name. <laughs> it is a, a, what, a name that sounds like it's a real name. It does. And I got to say though uh after the king's funeral, LL kindly takes Davin, now King Davin under his wing, saying he will teach the young boy how to rule like his father. But because he's the obvious villain, he promptly creates a child army and kicks all the dogs out of the castle. Yeah, what, yeah. Is, what is this with this weird plot or this weird characteristic where they, we've got this villain and he's doing stuff. He's saying he wants to keep slaves and he thinks, you know, all this stuff that he wants. But then he also just kicks a dog in the nuts. Like, it's just... Well, By order of King Devin, all dogs shall be turned out of the castle immediately. <laughs> He carries cats around. I think he's a he's a cat villain. So oh, he yeah. really doesn't like dogs. You want to know how that makes sense? How? The cat's name is Angel Eyes. The way it makes sense is that if that cat is really a talking oh. cat voiced by Eric Roberts, <laughs> we didn't hear it because he can only talk to people once, yeah. but I think that that was a talking cat. You know, Jay, you might be onto something there because I got some serious Eric Roberts vibes from LL throughout the movie. Mm, I don't know mm -hmm. if you guys felt the same thing, but I, I got more. I, I could like, definitely see I, it. I got more of a uh, what do you call it? I don't know. Uh, Salvation Army Snape. <laughs> yeah, that's fair. <laughs> that's fair too. <laughs> oh, that's such a good description. Oh, boy. oh, and we should also point out before the king dies, he gives his son a yeah. little little Galgameth, which is a little stone statue, a little figurine, which was a little more. <laughs> important in the North Korean version because <laughs> if I remember right, it was the old man who created it from his like rice or yeah, something and gave food, it to his yeah. son and yeah. yeah. And it was a little more a little more traumatic, I think, than this child's version. Yeah, the kid he he tells Davin that like this will protect you or something like that and yeah. sort of explains it and Davin's like, eh, whatever. Like he's he's just sad. What do you want? I cannot believe you would rule so unlike your father. So full of hate and greed, so cowardly. You're crazy. Let me sleep. But hey, we're like 20 minutes in, and Galgameth is just about to be born when uh, I guess LL sees the thing and he throws it on the ground and breaks it. But the serving girl saves it and makes sure that King Devon sees it and cries on it, bringing Galgameth to life. Yeah. yeah. This is where the movie gets awesome. It, well, <laughs> that's one way to put it. <laughs> so, Mike, how would you put it? I would put it where the the maid who is like a wasted role in the movie because she does come back later, <laughs> totally. but it is. But she, mm -hmm. It's so wasted. She, she obviously like cares for this kid or at least cares about him. You know, she finds the toy that was broken and she like gets it out of a fucking fire too, not just like digs it out of the trash. She's like Oh yeah. takes this <laughs> broken little Galgameth statue the Galga pieces yeah. puts it back together for the kid or whatever, and then like and then she's gone for the whole movie till the very end when I don't know, I guess they needed her again. <laughs> Not really though. They easily they easily could have combined her role oh. with Julia. Yeah. Oh, she totally. Yeah. I, yeah. They could have they totally. should have been the same character. Um, but but yeah, so he cries on it and then that makes him come to life. Yeah, and he comes up. He's super cute. He's a little tiny little he's a little tiny guy. Guy and he scares off some blackbirds. I thought he was going to eat the blackbirds, to be honest. But who are you?
Well, he he beat the shit out of him. I thought the Blackbird stomped him. Whoa. It's, it happens off screen. <laughs> it's true. It does happen off screen. But but the Blackbirds are okay. You see them fly off. Galgameth just scared the shit out of them, I guess. Can I say another way this movie would be so much better? <laughs> so much Go better. Is little Galgi, as he's running around, with like, <laughs> and, and they do call him Galgi through most of the movie. Oh, yes. Little Gal- Galgi, for a minute there, kind of reminded me of Bad Milo. <laughs> and <laughs> how much yeah. cooler this movie would be combined with the mythology of Bad Milo. <laughs> so wait, so so you're suggesting that maybe this kid would have had to like shit out <laughs> Galgi? Yes, and Galgi would keep getting bigger. <laughs> and Galgi, but yeah, it doesn't. And Milo always goes back up the butt, right? So right. Galgi would have to try to return home, but it keeps getting bigger. <laughs> Uh, and just more, imagine and the ridges. possibilities. I'm, I'm oh, not, goodness. I'm not sure I like where this conversation is going, so I'm going to continue along with the plot. Hold on. Like, I'm going to look up. I need to look up a website for this real quick. Um... Uh, uh, yes, we do have an XXX porn parody, so... Oh, uh, of Galgameth or Bad Milo? <laughs> It's exactly what you described, uh, Jay. Someone okay, must have been right. listening. <laughs> <laughs> so, at some point, uh, King Davin realizes just what is happening, that LL is kind of, he's totally in charge. Uh, <laughs> You're responsible for the suffering and hate in this kingdom, aren't you? Of course. How else could I conquer the Lubanians? You don't expect me to depend on your adjusting skills, uh, Yeah, you? LL catches him and imprisons him, I guess. So I'm not really yeah. sure why they went on a little wagon ride to some place. Just throw him in the dungeon. But they take him out, right. in the villa, out, mm. out in the countryside somewhere where I guess is a much more secure prison where Galgameth can eat the iron bonds and they can go on. A- oh, Jay, you want to talk about this horse chase? Well, okay. Um, you can Jay's say no. Like, no. You can say no. <laughs> it won't move right along. I wouldn't. I wouldn't c- complain. Well, okay. So, I okay. I did like one little thing where Galgameth. Uh, they were gonna. This is this before or after they try to boil Galgameth to death. This is this is before. This is the uh, the jailers try to uh, boil Galgameth. Yeah. So they they get Devin in jail in the jail, don't they? And then yeah. yeah. Uh, they get they get a hold of Galgameth, the jailer, the main guy, and he thinks that Galgameth. They don't even care what he is; that he's a creature. He's just gonna. He does. He just immediately boils him. He, he pulls, sticks him in boiling water. He pulls a a and, gross, soggy rat out of his stew pot and goes. Sorry, found something with a little more meat on its bones. <laughs> tosses in Galgi. <laughs> right, because oh yeah, so, so the. Galgameth ate through the kid's bonds, but the kid didn't escape. The jailers still get them both. They're going to deal with the kid. They try to boil Galgameth. And I, I did actually like the fact that Galgameth bit holes in the pot. <laughs> yeah. And all of the boiling water drained out. And the guy's like, what? And he goes up and opens the pot and Galgameth's just sitting there inside the pot. So I, I, I did sort of like that, I, I guess. I mean, Galga- the, the rubber costume is pretty cute. For most of yeah, it. he's a cute little guy at this point. Like, and it actually has a lot of really yeah. good like facial animation. I'd say like the eyebrows and stuff yeah. do a lot of stuff. Yeah, there's so, a lot of articulation in the face. That's the words. So yeah, they spent some money on this yeah. costume. Yeah. It was it's pretty cute. Not cheap. And then oh, so the the chase right the the jailer and the guards chase them. They escape easily. Oh yeah. And the archers shoot the bag <laughs> that that. Uh, Galgameth is hiding in, and little Galgi eats the arrowheads, <laughs> and he, <laughs> he grows in size. This is one of the first times, first or second time, you see him really grow in size. Yeah, um, he's still fairly small. Yeah, he's like and, the, the um, size of a child at this point, I'd say. Yeah, he eats some arrows. He eats a sword, and uh, th- here's something that I didn't enjoy <laughs> about this: Galgi <laughs> takes the arrows for Davin. And Davin has the audacity to say, Thank you. Next time you decide to save me, can you be a little quicker? What an ungrateful king. I'm like, it's... What an asshole. What a a brat. He's lived a life of privilege and luxury, Jay. So, of course, he would 
It'd be that way. Affluenza. Yes. That's what he's got. <laughs> this, this is, though, the guys, this is really important because this is where we find out that someone decided that the whole g- Galgi beat up two blackbirds uh, was important because none of us thought it would be. Not a no. single viewer thought that was going to matter. But this is where, as he's about to, as the boy is about to be shot to death with arrows, he, he like, <laughs> randomly thinks to shout blackbird at Galgi, and then Galgi protects him. It's oh. fucking stupid. Yeah, because Galgi screams, yeah. right? Yeah. He, he screams this the little superpower thing that he has. <laughs> I think he's just excited. Oh. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Galgi. Well, I, I suppose saying Blackbird is quicker than saying Galgi. Remember how excited you were? Be that excited again. But I would like that <laughs> so, more. I would too. There's, see, there's so many ways we could improve this movie. Oh, God. It just, and not even ways we have to think too hard about. Just everything yeah. about this movie can just be made better. <laughs> ah, except for the disguise that we're coming <laughs> to. This oh, it's is so, my favorite part of the movie. It's I think. so perfect. Magical. <laughs> so, so, let me set the scene here. So, Davin steals some clothes so he can he can disguise Galgi as a girl, and then they go to an inn. Wait, wait, wait. Is filled with Chris, d- what mm-hmm. about Davin's costume? Didn't Davin disguise himself being the, the king? No. No? no, no, no. He just wear. No, he's still wear. He's pretty much still in his pajamas, <laughs> and he's in them the entire movie. They do rub uh, what I assume is feces on each other's faces. <laughs> oh yeah. Hey, hey, Jay. I've we're not getting into a kink tank, all right? <laughs> There's no kink tank for Galgi meth. Oh, <laughs> Dear God, oh. what if there was? <laughs> There's got to be guy, so kaiju weird. stuff. Uh, <laughs> unless it's been edited out. So far, we have had way more sex talk about a kids movie than we have for any other movie so far uh, this season and most other movies is bad milo a sex thing though oh no but you know i i at least you know i, I imagine this would be all right those ridges all right galgi's got oh. those pleasure pleasure ridges <laughs> see now you're making it worse <laughs> wait can okay I'm, I'm gonna bring this way back down to earth because <laughs> when they go into the bar here and they meet Julia, the serving girl, and she starts talking. Everybody hates the king, and Davin's keeping a low profile. Jay, I gotta say, though, she's not just a serving girl. She is a rated PG serving wench. Yes. Very important distinction. <laughs> and she, in her PG serving wench-like way, <laughs> describes how she hates the king because King Davin, which is really LL Cool J, it rips apart families. And I'd like to just point out that he, at this point, uh, Davin is in the neighboring country. Is he? I got no sense of Yes, it. he is. It's like Lo- Lovaria or oh. something like yeah, that. Yeah, it's like the fiefdom that they were trying to free. Lovania. Uh, yeah. Lovania, yeah. The, the previous king freed Lovania. LL Cool J says, nah, and is trying to, and puts the clamp down on him and is like taking their kids for child soldiers and doing all this evil stuff to them. And so... It, and so families are being torn apart. So the, Julia thinks Davin rips families apart, much like Donald Trump. Oh, wow. Getting all political in here. With- I told you I'd bring it back this down. This season is just getting real political about stuff. <laughs> we don't we don't want to get dark, so we can continue. What's Galgi doing? Yeah, well, for some reason, Galgi needs a nap. <laughs> and so they take him into the back room <laughs> right next to all the wine casks. Yeah. And he decides to eat the iron spigots on the on the on the oak yeah. barrels, right? Which, of course, all the wine starts flowing out. And Galgi, I don't. I really related with Galgameth at this point because <laughs> because he's quaffing alcohol by the barrel. <laughs> yes, yes. I mean, you can't make a mess, so he's just <laughs> drinking it down. And Galgameth, I really wish they'd done a lot more with drunk Galgameth. Oh yeah. Sadly, they don't. <laughs> that would have been great. Do you guys think that this movie is the inspiration for the the indie sweetheart uh, band Iron and Wine? Because <laughs> yeah, that's all course. Galgi eats. <laughs> I have no <laughs> doubt. <laughs> so now the the guards show up and beat everyone up. Davin is really well. He's told everyone that he and Galgameth, well, Galgameth is his sister, who's had the plague or something. That's her ter- terrible deformity. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and he really doesn't want to be put into LL Cool J's army. Or sorry, Prince Davin's army. So uh, these these village people hide the hide them, and they are like defending this orphan boy with their lives. 
Like the knights show up, arrest everyone, they're looking for Davin, but looking for this boy, and no one's giving him up. Like, these people are very, very nice. They're good people. Yeah, yeah. they're they're solid folk. <laughs> I guess so. But then they burn the inn down and they're going to execute all the villagers. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. Come on. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the the drunk dragon didn't help. I believe um, this is one of the first parts I recognize because there's the execution mm-hmm. yeah. scene and they're going to yeah. kill Julia and little Galgi gets up there and eats the head, like the axe head off of the executioner's axe. Is that? My God! Kill it! <laughs> Which prompts Davin to say, "He's crazy, but he's mine." <laughs> <laughs> but, but yeah, that's that's oh. a direct reference to the first movie yeah. or the original. Yeah. Bulga, sorry. <laughs> yeah. Except I, th- I like that it was how it was done practically in North Korea. It's just a, ter- <laughs> it's just a terrible '90s CG effect in this one. For no reason. Oh, for no There's reason. There's no reason. They've got a really good looking, articulated rubber suit and yeah. and they have the ability to tur- turn the camera away they could like cut to something else <laughs> and just have there be a bite out of it <laughs> but instead instead someone opened up ms paint drew drew a circle like an oval put it over his mouth and then squished it down to make it look like he bit it that's what they did over a very good looking articulated rubber suit they use MS fuck paint. <laughs> <laughs> well, Mike, Mike, think about this for a minute. Put yourself in the mindset of a '90s child. Okay. Well, okay? you're you're a kid. Right. You see you see Galgameth, yeah. and okay. this is like the first big. I mean, okay, like the fourth big time he's eaten some metal, right? <laughs> uh-huh. And you really want to see it. You, I, I do. mean, you are addicted to seeing this stuff. So. You're the filmmakers. You're going to give those children, those 90s children, what they want. And you're going to show Galgameth eating the fuck out of that <laughs> MS Paint axe. Wait, is, yeah. is, how big is Galgameth at this point? Is he? He's not adult he's, size yet, is he? He's like the size of the kid. Okay. Jay, I, I wanted to get at this point. He's the size of a kid now, but as the fight, go, the fight through this jailbreak scene goes on, Galgameth literally goes through puberty before our very eyes. <laughs> this is true. Like... He gets taller, he gets stronger, his voice gets deeper, like he's got some roars going. Wait, can I say who plays Galgameth as a, as a f- bigger person? Did you guys look this up? No, I did not. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Doug Jones. What? Yes, hey. that Doug Jones. What? From The Shape of Water. What? From Star Trek. Yep. What? Commander Saru. <laughs> what? That's right. It is Doug Jones in the adult-sized Galgameth costume. Holy dick and balls. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yep. <laughs> I, I had to like l- actually go into IMDb a little bit because I'm like that can't be the same Doug Jones. <laughs> yes. Oh yeah. Oh, it was. It is. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm amazed by that. Hey, everybody's got to start somewhere, right? But <laughs> <laughs> yeah. why not? Why not the adventures of? He's Galvin? come a long way. <laughs> I'd like to see like the ten or twenty year challenge with <laughs> with Doug Jones's characters. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe we could put that up on like Instagram or something. <laughs> Let's do we'll it. Put like a Galgameth next to Commander Saru or the Shape of Water <laughs> thing. <laughs> oh, but well, at this point, jailbreak goes on. LL gets his ass kicked by a girl because because Julia, the PG tavern wench, can fight. Hell yeah. Yeah, Davin was fighting but wait, while he was holding the sword by the blade. <laughs> oh at no point, at no point did anyone tell this kid how to fucking hold a sword. Someone throws him a sword, he just grabs it by the blade, and then no one went, oops, let's try that again. Maybe we should not have you grab it by the sharp part of the object. Uh, instead, they just said, fuck it, next, next scene. <laughs> well, well. To, to be fair, none of these swords are very convincing as actual swords. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> so That's true. I'm just rolling with it in in life here that you know no one taught 
the prince, the now king, how to use a goddamn sword. <laughs> or that you don't touch the shark part. It's the same thing. It should, it should be, if a medieval person's watching this movie, it would be the same thing as when you see someone look down the barrel of a gun. You're right. Like, no, 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 no. No, no like, don't it, do it like that. It should that. be anytime someone's about to touch the sharp part of a sword. No you one should told cringe. him that swords will cut you wide open. Don't fucking touch swords, man. You know, swords are dangerous. They'll cut your fucking throat wide open. God, <laughs> Davin. All right. Yeah, so anyway, they, they all go to the rebel camp because I guess there's a rebel camp now. They just all go there. Well, you burn down the inn. You got to hang out somewhere. I guess so. And uh, Davin and Julia, they start spending a little time together. And... <laughs> I can only guess that Julia saw how poorly Davin was holding the sword. <laughs> so she teaches him a couple moves, kind of teaches him maybe how to joust or something. And uh, I'm just thinking that this is a very lighthearted rebellion because everyone seems to be having a great time. They're playing mm-hmm. fucking soccer at some point. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's a lighthearted rebellion. They don't really give all that many shits. <laughs> <laughs> but at some point... Uh, they decide, or Davin decides that Galgameth just is not big enough. They've got to, like, fight the LL or something. I don't remember what the reasoning was behind everything. Well, he, he's not big enough. Get, little Davin is a, becomes addicted. I believe, like, I'm really addicted <laughs> to making Galgi bigger. He just keeps pushing it on all the people. No, Galgi needs to be bigger. Oh Galgi needs to be bigger. We have to give Galgi all of our swords. He talks these, this army into gi- giving up their own weaponry so that Galgi can dis- eat He it. disarms them. He does. <laughs> he has oh. the rebels disarm themselves so Galgi can get, get bigger. Mm-hmm. And that's all he yeah. fucking does for the next 20 minutes of movie. Galgi must get Galgi bigger. Must, Galgi get Galgi bigger. must get bigger. Yeah. <sighs> and so then like they end up at a, at a foundry because they say, oh, well, there's going to be metal there and we need to get Galgi bigger. So let's take him to mm-hmm. the foundry. And they take him in there and it turns out to be a trap. Right. And mm-hmm. LL Cool J. Oh, yeah. and I'm getting to something here. This is going to be good. We have not touched on this yet and I can't <laughs> believe it. Um, we we get into this this foundry and everybody dumps a bunch of flammable liquid on it and the whole thing's burning up it's a big trap and galgi who's now like 20 feet tall uh drops davin outside with one hand and you think he's gonna he's gonna die what happens here okay is we haven't mentioned this character ll has this guy Oh, named yeah. Templeton. Yeah. Templeton is actor Time Winters. Oh, yeah. Who was yeah. in Josh Kirby, Dino Warriors, slash yep. Human Pets. Fuck. <laughs> Fuck you, seriously? Yeah. Yep. He's, he, Time Winters is like uh, LL's <laughs> sort of right-hand man getting things done. Yeah. Well, no, I remember him in this movie. I don't remember which character he might have been in Josh Kirby. He's a blacksmith. I think he was the blacksmith uh, in Josh Oh, okay, so Josh he does Kirby. a lot of yeah. stuff with metal. I get you. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I saw his name in the credits, and I went, holy shit, and had to double check. and looked it up. Yeah. It's Time Winters. Like, you can never forget a name like Time no, Winters. No, you can't. This is a fantastic oh, name. Oh, my God. And so... In a weird twist, uh, Time Winters decides to free uh, Davin and says, look, run to another country and live there or LL's going to kill you. Yeah, yeah. Which yeah. I thought was a nice move. Um, our foundry explodes, but Galgi is alive. And now he looks like <laughs> serious hardcore. Like he looks like a, cr- uh, like a rave yeah. turned into a creature. <laughs> He's got these lines, these glowing lava lines all over his body burning it's, through him it's, it's dope it's, oh Which, <laughs> man let me tell you i was excited this is the part where the movie starts really yeah getting this is awesome. where they finally decide oh let's let's get into this shit none of this with no, no more soccer at the camp <laughs> my no. notes i would just like to read this to you when this happens i got very excited because this this mirrors polgasari as well there's the same scene in polgasari where they capture him and light the cage on fire mm-hmm. and then he becomes a hot metal dragon you know dragon but my I, I gotta make sure I pronounce this right I know I wrote it myself but <laughs> oh he's a lava dragon now holy shit and um, I think I said that right yeah but but he's a lava dragon for only like the next what three or four minutes <laughs> 
It's such a bummer yeah. when, he, oh, when, they, when they cut to like the next day or whatever, and he's yeah. just normal again, and I got sad. I was so hoping he'd stay like that. Oh, yeah. I mean, I get it because he cooled down, and it's not like Polgasari had his fire powers through the rest of the movie. Still, it was a pretty good look for Galgameth. It was dope as shit! Yeah, I gotta say, there were like four or five different suits there must have been, like different looking creatures yeah. for Galgameth. Like, he changed, as he got bigger, he changed, and they had different, really great suits for yeah. every version of him. Absolutely. Yeah. Ah, and then we hit the old Barry Galgameth scene. Yeah, long after this, I think this is I think this is actually where they where Devin disarms uh, Galgi and <laughs> Galgameth must get bigger. <laughs> yeah, I don't remember. I don't remember so much about this movie. It's just it was just all this like scene, scene, scene with no real connection between them. I could tell you exactly what happens here. All right, I can get us here. So this is where we find out that LL Cool J is building a giant cannon. Oh, which I wanted to get into that. I wanted to get into that real quick because now I it's going to sound. I really hope this doesn't sound too offensive. I don't mean it offensively. Oh but God, I don't LL, say it. But oh but LL has an army of Chinamen to create his cannon. Yes, um, it's just like one guy. <sighs> one guy. Isn't it that's just like one. one guy. I don't one even. Guy. Was he even really Oriental? I, I really honestly I, I don't remember. It's like his wise man. Uh, really, I so so stereo. I, I thought it was so stereotyp stereotypical. Oh yeah, <laughs> it was just like this, you know, hat, the outfits. It was terrible. Yeah, he's a mystic. It's supposed to be like the wizard. He's his wizard, yeah, effectively. The whole th it can like nuke an entire village yeah, in one shot. It's like the fucking Death Star. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. It's the fucking Death Star. It, it is literally a Death Star, except, so the first time they test it, they blow up an entire village, <laughs> yeah. one shot, and it's a cool effect, like, yeah. there's a huge explosion out of the mouth of this cannon, it's fucking cool, and it blows up this whole village, and then, every other time that it is shot, uh, <laughs> it, it does just a little kaboom, no. like, it's not, it doesn't blow up a village ever again. My God! It's come back. Fire that cannon. No! Fire! I love the reveal of this thing because LL, like, he's so happy his cannon is, is like, Galgameth has been defeated. He's, his cannon is ready. He goes up on his wall and he's just like, hey, what's, what's that village over there? And then just boom, they just blow the shit out of it. <laughs> yeah, there was some uh. funny lines there where the guy's like, "Oh, that's like, yeah. you know, whatever village," and he's like, <laughs> "No, it was whatever village," <laughs> 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 and it's gone. <laughs> yeah, but yeah, so they bury they bury Galgi in yeah. in like that same scene in Polgasari. They have a big pit. They have a mine. Does anyone remember the name of what? Does anyone remember the name of the mine? It's like yeah. Elderberry Mine or something. <laughs> Bloomsbury, Bloomsbury Mine. There it yeah. is. They did get some burning boulders yeah, in that do. scene. I thought that was kind of surprising. Yeah. And I thought oh, yeah. I thought that would be a lot say, being made in America. I remember watching the scene in Polgasari that people are just <laughs> yeah. almost getting like killed by these fucking flaming boulders. And I thought, okay, they make this in America. There are some total labor safety laws that are going to be <laughs> followed in this scene. But goddamn, I saw like two people barely get out of the way of these flaming yeah. boulders. <laughs> yeah, and you know it wasn't like superimposed because you would have yeah. been able to tell because oh, yeah. of the rest of the no, movie. It would look almost <laughs> as dangerous as the North Korean version. <laughs> it's crazy. Yeah, I had that same thought, Chris. I'm like, this is just like the movie too. <laughs> Someone almost Someone died. Almost died. So there's this like scribe or something earlier on in the movie that you see, and he somehow escapes from. He thinks Davin is an is a bad guy, but he somehow escapes before LL can execute him or whatever. But the rebels capture him, and he rec and they're going to hang him as a spy. But he recognizes Davin as the king. So now the rebels are like, "Fuck, we got to kill the king too." This is the <laughs> yeah. same guy, even though we've been fighting against this other guy the whole time. The best line in the movie is this Oh, I scene. know what it is. <laughs> I bet I know that, what it that, is. So, <laughs> <laughs> so, so the guy, the guy, the scribe is like, that's the, that's the king there. And then, and then some other guy in front of the rebellion goes, There, there he is. Lie to 
liar. That's a homeless boy. <laughs> <laughs> the way he says it is so fucking good. <laughs> That's not the king, it's a homeless boy. <laughs> it's so fucking good. <laughs> See, I thought you were referring to another line that happens a couple minutes later oh. when I guess Devin falls off the horse or whatever and isn't actually hanged, but and he runs off to try if no one else is going to save Galgameth from this this pit, Devin is just going to dig him up himself. But there are some guards there who come in. They're trying to arrest Devin for... They just think he's another homeless boy, right? <laughs> this is the line I was talking about. Yeah. Uh, is it? Okay. But, then the, but then the rebels come and save him, blah, 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 blah. But they let one of the one of the knights go to report back because Devin has a plan. And so he lets one of the knights go back to to LL. But before he does that, he asks, he asks Devin if he's ever heard of a cannon. You're all dead because LL's got a cannon. Ever hear of a cannon? An enormous gun, powerful enough to reach this mine and blow you all apart with enormous metal balls. <laughs> <laughs> go ahead. And he says, go ahead and laugh. Oh my god. Oh. All right, Jay. Though the line I was talking about was when when uh, Davin goes to unbury Galgi from the pit, and it's it right when the guards show up to arrest him, they just go, Drop your rocks, boy. By order of His Highness LL, you're under arrest. <laughs> <laughs> and again, it's just something like Kelly said. It. I don't know. It hit me. Oh, uh, <laughs> well, I, I hope the listener enjoyed all three of those, which short little really clips. probably aren't funny in, in any other context. <laughs> probably not. No. no. <laughs> well, enormous metal balls is funny in every context. Yeah, that's yeah. that's the funniest one actually. Yeah. <laughs> so, so they let the guard go. And the guard is sure to tell LL that they're at Bloomsbury Mine. So, of course, LL wants to blow up Bloomsbury Mine. Yeah. But it's just a trick to free Galgameth. So, <laughs> the uh, apparently they've traded in the nuclear cannonballs for something a little lower powered. Um, so, it's enough to blow up the mine, but <laughs> let Galgameth rise from his grave. But only after Devin cr cries, Blackbird. 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 What the hell is Blackbird? Blackbird. 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 Oh, again with the Blackbird. So, are we to assume that the the explosion <laughs> didn't resurrect the monster, but what it was was the the Tinkerbell style chanting of Blackbird over and over. <laughs> he couldn't just say Blackbird when it's buried because the, uh, the the ground would absorb the sound, and that cry of Blackbird would never reach Galgameth's ears. But with the cannon, it's loosened enough on the dirt that he can yell down to Galgameth, and oh, Blackbird yeah, makes yeah. him rise again. <laughs> <laughs> of course yeah. that's how it's, what happened. <laughs> that makes a lot of sense. Chris, I'm glad I'm glad I'm glad uh, you thought this through. <laughs> and you know, once once the whole thing like doesn't start the stuff starts going bad for LL. This is also about the point in the movie where all of the swearing starts. And uh, I don't appreciate that for a children's film. Wait, were there cusses? What did they say? I oh, yeah. Any cusses? At least two. At least oh, two. Yeah. I wrote them down each time. Because when the cannon jams, uh, LL says, damn it. Which, you know what, man? Hey, if I'm going to show my children this, keep oh, yeah? that potty mouth out of my galgi. You've got to have something to keep the parents' interest, Jay. And a little swear word used judiciously can help keep your parents' attention. Uh, well, yeah, it'll keep their attention. I'm not sure for the right reasons, but and 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 if you're trying to get people's attention, this point in the movie is not the time to start. <laughs> I mean, they're getting your attention now. We just we just resurrected a giant monster. We're about to smash the shit out of some buildings. <laughs> I mean, shit That's true. is oh, kicking That is off. true. When when Galgi starts, he's. I mean, and of course <laughs> yeah. he's kaiju size now, right? He's yeah. big, so. He starts ripping through the castle, and that is also another uh, direct, you know, parallel to Polgasari yeah. when Polgasari starts smashing through, which I thought was one of the coolest parts, yeah. probably of both movies, yeah. to be honest. Yeah. And wasn't uh, one of the rebels got captured, right? And didn't they reveal now that he's a bad guy? I. Uh, there was earlier in the movie. That. Yeah. Sure. It, it, just take my word for it. <laughs> okay. One of the rebels. <laughs> one of the rebels. He is a blonde dude. 
gets captured early and he's like, don't worry about me. Was it the magician guy? Uh, I don't, that part I don't know. I, I've got about 50%, maybe you got 50%, maybe together we'll figure this out. <laughs> But yeah, he and, and whatever. They have the serving girl. They want to know how to destroy Galgameth, and so they're like, "We're gonna kill your child if you don't tell us how to do it." And so she has to tell them that they can destroy Galgameth with what? With what it's, created uh, him? Yeah, salt water. Right. She gives them a riddle or whatever. Yeah, oh no, what she does him. tell them what it is. You're right. Yeah, <sighs> salt water. Salt water can kill Galgameth. Obviously. Also, about here is where Time Winner says, "Damn." By the way, just you know, if we're keeping count. We have a swear jar. This movie really is this real cuss bucket, huh? Yeah. Uh, so King, we were overcome by the rebels at Bloomsbury Mine. You idiot. Can't you do anything right? They're all gathered there. The rebels, Davin, they're all at Bloomsbury Mine. I, I only escaped. Here's the big final battle. The rebels attack the building, or attack the castle. Galgameth just, he, he had a couple of fun gags from the original Pulgasari where he mm -hmm, mm -hmm. catches the, uh, the cannonball <laughs> in his mouth and he spits it back out. Damn it. Damn it. He beats the shit out of the castle. And uh, at this point, LL's like, I know how to beat this thing. He runs down, kidnaps <laughs> Davin again, and runs, I guess they're near the ocean because he runs for a ship. That is a surprise. The ocean. So, mm -hmm. I don't know why. I guess it, it easily, why wouldn't, why couldn't they be? But it was just was like, Almost jarring that they're yeah. like, oh, yeah, I guess you have an ocean, too, huh? Okay. <laughs> yeah, so convenient. <laughs> yeah, so LL runs off with Davin and the uh, and his right-hand man to the beach, and he ties Davin to a boat, and Julia is running after them. And she tries to get Galgameth's attention, and Galgameth is like, huh? Oh, and just starts running after them. Well, okay, striding <laughs> slowly after them, mm -hmm. but he's a giant kaiju at this point, so he catches up yeah. pretty easily. But <sighs> So what happens when he reaches the beach, Mike? When when Galgi reaches the beach and sees and sees his sweet sweet boy just tied up to a little rowboat yep. out there, <laughs> it's a little rowboat. Yeah. Uh, well, Galgi Galgi tries to go for him. He he set, puts a foot in the water and uh, he don't do so good. It's a bit uh, abrasive to his metal body. I guess I guess he's made of metal, also, guys. He doesn't look like it. He looks like he's flesh. He looks like a Ninja Turtle with the paint rubbed off. Well, not anymore. Yeah. Now he's huge and he has horns and stuff. Well, I have to say, this yeah. is the only thing I really liked more about this movie than Pulgasari. Because in Pulgasari, they don't quite know how to, like, you've got this giant monster, and they're not really quite sure how to wrap it up. Because clearly no giant monsters live in modern day North Korea, so they've got to kill him off somehow, right? Yeah. So in this one, Galgameth sees LL set fire to Davin's little rowboat. And Galgameth, little Galgi, big Galgi now, he just musters up his courage knowing he's got to save his little boy. <sighs> so he strides into the water, and it's very, very hard on Galgameth, but he yeah. is trying to reach his little boy. Yeah, I mean, in this one, they go for the fields. In, in the in the yeah. Pulgasari, it's all about the evils of capitalism. So slightly yeah. different things they're going for there. <laughs> <laughs> but we hit probably my, my biggest what the fuck moment that now in hindsight it kind of makes sense. But. Oh, I know. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so I just saw lightning strike him. Like, what? Where's the storm? But no, a single bolt of lightning strikes Galgameth. And Galgameth just shoots it at LL's ship. Just Emperor Palpatine's just, <laughs> just fucking just nails that ship. I loved just and before that when Galgi's going out there because I, I I was very surprised by this scene because it was like an actually good like emotional like oh no there's you know Galgi loves his little boy but like <laughs> they have chosen the nickname Galgi for this creature <laughs> because they chose the cumbersome name Galgameth which you can't say without sounding like you're just saying it wrong and so they call him affectionately Galgi so the little boy is tied up to a, a mast on a sailboat and there's fire around him and he's shouting at Galgi he's going no Galgi no Galgi go back and it is so fucking funny <laughs> because it is the dumbest sounding fucking name like like it's a, it's a literal pet name 
and it's just so stupid. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're absolutely right. No, Galgi. No, Galgi. <laughs> <laughs> oh, but Galgi goes. Well, Galgi goes. And he he gets submerged. He manages to save Davin, who cries. And and if I may, uh, the thing that occurred to me is that when Davin is saved, and it's clear that Galgi is dying, the sound he makes reminded me of like if <laughs> if you could go up to like any kaiju, Godzilla or whatever, and just with like a giant stethoscope or something, and just listen to what it would sound like if a kaiju had a stomach ache. <laughs> that's the sound like like a, like a giant <laughs> stomach that's just like groaning and gurgling. That's the sound that uh, poor little Galgi makes or big Gal- Galgi makes as he, uh, you know, starts to disintegrate or whatever it is in the salt water. Sink into the ocean yeah. depths. Oh. Yeah. And Davin, of course, cries and he's like, Blackbird. <laughs> yeah, he does too. <laughs> also, fucking stupid. <laughs> like in a, I say that in an affectionate way, just like it's just bird. why did why did you choose this as a screenwriter? Why is this Black. a thing? <laughs> Blackbird. Oh, I love it. Oh well, movie's over, right, guys? That's it. The end. It should be. Yep. But then we cut to morning. <laughs> just there's morning now. <sighs> Everyone's washed up on the beach, and we've got to we've got to make that jousting scene earlier really pay off. God. Okay. I did like one thing here, like when <laughs> when LL is wading up out of the water because his you know oh, ship yeah, got yeah, nuked yeah, by yeah, the yeah. lightning blast. He starts laughing and talking about how stupid Galgi is, <laughs> and how they're like, uh, "There's no way a cat would do that." <laughs> now a cat, cats hate water, but a cat. Would never do something stupid like that. Cats hate water. A cat wouldn't go in there, not even for me. Yeah, he's admiring a cat and how smart it would be over the stupid Galgamesh. <laughs> he's mean, man. He can see right up until the end, LL is a, is a mean man. He's a real bastard. Well, that's. I think that's so you don't feel bad for him because he's the only likable character in the movie. <laughs> LL? <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's so. oh god! Well, he gets he gets all the best lines. <laughs> oh. So we've got to we got to have a joust. We got to show that Davin can finally joust, and because he can did joust, then you buy that he's king once the scene is over. But uh, mm-hmm. yeah, he knocks LL off his horse with the <laughs> rowboat paddle. <sighs> yep, and and then uh, here here comes time winners again. He gives Davin a sword to to fight against uh, against LL, and you know what? Yeah. Let, let's be real here, man. Like if Davin had to fight the the Black Knight, he was taught by Julia like two days ago how to fight with yeah. a sword. He was holding the blade like a day ago. <laughs> it, like he would get his ass handed oh, to him. <laughs> that reminds me of something about Julia that we I totally forgot about is that yeah, apparently. Our yeah, our PG serving wench is actually the daughter of the king and queen of this country. Yeah, she's a princess. She's doing a little sneaky, sneaky, sneaky too, huh? Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. I didn't catch that, by the way. So LL loses the sword fight. Davin basically has him down. Could have killed him, but spares his life. But he leaves the sword right next to LL. Who, which, who then picks it up and tries to stab Davin in the back. But Davin has enough time to pull LL's knife and stab him and right kill him. And <laughs> well, and this is what I'm talking about. LL here, he's got a knife in his gut. He's dying. And his dying words are, You'll still make a lousy king. <laughs> and dies and oh and then after that right so everything is hunky dory again and Davin goes up to Time Winners and offers him a chance to join up and <laughs> Time is like nah and just rides off a frame and that's it he's gone <laughs> great. Then they find Galgi on the beach shore, and then the credits roll. Well, we got the coronation scene first. Ah, fuck. And you see, and you see Julia's king and queen parents, I guess. Everyone's all dressed well, up. Well, wait, my favorite part of the coronation scene is when the dog that was owned by the scribe chases uh, the, the talking cat, Angel Eyes, <laughs> out of the castle. 
<laughs> even even the ca- the evil cat gets it. Little detail. It's the little things oh, in these yeah. movies. <laughs> and then they find the little figurine of Galgameth washed up on the beach, so we can pass the kaiju on to later generations. Oh yeah, and and Davin sticks it back up his butt, and the movie goes over. <laughs> the end. <laughs> yes. So. I've got a couple questions for you guys. Just now that we've seen the original North Korean version and this watered-down American kids version, which one do you think had the better production values? I mean, oh. you've got this, you know, lower-budget North Korean version but a, and higher-budget American version, but I don't know, there was a lot I liked way better from the North Korean version. Oh, oh yeah. Oh, I prefer for sure. Oh, sorry. Easy. Yeah. Well, yeah. okay. Yeah. I think Paul Gasari is more of just an impressive movie, but despite the fact that it didn't have as big of a budget. Well, you know, you've got the the slave labor, too, of all those North Korean peasants. That'll do it. I mean, yeah. <laughs> that'll, that'll save you some cash. They put their literal blood and sweat into that one, <laughs> yes, so. they did. <laughs> yeah. No, I like, I like, I definitely like Pulgasari better. It, it's but, more interesting, yeah. I think. And that will be reflected in my rating. Yeah. Well, how about which man inside the suit? So, as Jay said, you've got Doug Jones, who's great in lots of things in the Polgasari suit in this one. But you had the guy, I forget his name, but you had the guy who played Godzilla, the That's 1970s true. version of Godzilla in the in Polgasari. <sighs> Both masters of their craft. Yeah. Look, man, uh, it's great, but I'm not going to vote against Doug Jones. <laughs> All right. Well, if you can't vote against Doug Jones, which monster had the better look? Polgasari or Galgi? Polgasari. Polgasari? <laughs> no question. Holy shit. Yeah. I mean, yeah, it was cool to see, like, lava, pol- lava Galgi, but, yeah. but uh, yeah. I mean, that was, like, just everything was so low at that point. I was like, oh, it's different. I like it. So, no, Polgasari. Rating time. So, guys, I, I really went back and forth on the rating scale for this one. But I think I eventually settled on, uh, I want to revisit the rating scale from the movie I liked more. I want to rate The Adventures of Galgameth from 1 to 100. Pugasarias! <laughs> oh, God. I can get behind that. <laughs> Mike. Yep. How would you rate this? I would rate this low. Uh, <laughs> um, uh, the, the the problem this movie had like there were some fun bits in this and it's a kids movie and I do like a, a good bad kids movie I mean that's one of my <laughs> my my guilty pleasures is is that but there's just ain't much going for this thing I think really the most enjoyment for this movie was seeing the comparison of Polgasari in it which is interesting and if you've seen Polgasari and you're curious about that you should watch this movie. I think that is a. I think this is an interesting thing to see the comparison. That aside, unless <laughs> I guess it's an unoffensive kids movie. Like it's not offensive. I guess the movie, except for those cusses, Jay. And I'm sorry Thank about you. those. But but I think you know maybe a kid would like this movie. I bet you there's people who saw this as a kid and have fond memories of it. I'm not one of them. But like eight year old, <laughs> eight year olds though. I'm, yeah, I'm yeah, yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, totally. And then and like I think if if you know. You gotta throw something on, and you're gonna you have YouTube up. Throw it on for a kid, fine. But in the in the end, it's it's just not interesting. I don't think it's anything anyone needs to watch. There's nothing crazy in it. So, uh, eh, forty Pulgasari Oz. <laughs> all right, all right. Thanks, Mike. Jay, how about you? Yeah, you know I don't need to go on and on about this. The, my the f- first thing I thought when I started watching this is like. This is suspiciously close in production value and just look to, like, your Josh Kirby's. <laughs> so if you like Josh Kirby, <laughs> yeah, there's a pretty good chance you're probably going to like this. Um, it, it's like Paul Gasari, but stripping out pretty much everything that makes it interesting. Uh, Mike, would you say 40? Yeah. That's that's pretty, pretty low. Um, yeah, I, I don't see, even for people who think it's interesting and... You know, you mentioned, oh, hey, check out the compare. You know, you may watch it to compare. Maybe just listen to this podcast (laughs) instead of watching it. (laughs) It'll save you some time. So, yeah, I'm going to go 37. Mm. Pogasari, (laughs) ah! 
Thank you, Jay. <laughs> Chris, you can't be very much higher than us on this. <laughs> no, I agree with everything you guys said. And I really mainly picked this because I wanted to see the comparison <laughs> between <laughs> Galgameth and Pogasari. Okay. All right. That's, so that's fair. literally the only reason I picked it. Um, I totally get I Watching it, I was so convinced that were some of the people who made Josh Kirby behind this movie because it looks almost exactly... I don't know, something about the mid-90s straight-to-video yeah. kids' movies has have the same look and feel. And I <laughs> I honestly sort of thought that maybe Dav, the actor who played Davin was a Josh Kirby look-alike. Ooh, it was, was close, was very yeah. Close, very close. But, yeah, like you guys said, there were, some, there were a few fun lines, but nothing crazy in the movie, and it's really... I really just watched it for the comparison. And uh, so I am, yeah, I'm not going to get much higher than you guys. So I am going to rate this uh, 35 Pugasarias, <laughs> <laughs> which I don't think is really higher Ooh, at all. No. no, that's lower than yeah. both. Man, the first, first clunker of the season. Well, yeah. you know, I mean, it, there is at least something interesting to be uh, said about the comparison. So, it, it, dude, yeah. okay, if we didn't have Paul Gasari to compare it to, oh, this we would have just beat oh, this yeah. up. And this would be boring, yeah. you know? Yeah, yeah. Um, I agree. But, I th- yeah, the comparison definitely helps us talk about it and <laughs> to watch it. Because, oh. <laughs> it's so slow. It's yeah. even slower than Pulgasari. I paused it several times, and I'm like, I really have an hour left of this? What are they going to do? On the next episode of B-Movie Mania. Boys, do we have a treat. I, I, I hope that you are ready for something a little more upbeat, a little more insane. Because let me tell you, a botched demon summoning causes three high school friends to become the de facto saviors of their hometown. It's a race against time to correct the ritual before a legion of dynamic... De- <laughs> let me start this over. <laughs> <laughs> I can't fuck up two words in the fucking Now you've guaranteed this will be in the episode. No, damn it! You guaranteed me that. Fuck. Uh. Guys, the, the premise of this movie, a botched demon summoning causes three high school friends to become the de facto saviors of their hometown. It's a race against time to correct the ritual before a legion of demonic zombie babies eat the entire town. We're going to watch the 2014 film, The Biker Warrior Babe versus the Zombie Babies from Hell. <laughs> That's a thing? <laughs> the title what? of the movie is The Biker Warrior Babe versus The Zombie Babies from Hell. It's on Amazon Prime. Yeah, no kidding, because that would not be on Netflix. <laughs> Oh boy! <laughs> it was it was uh, a good little indie B movie, and uh, I'm excited for you guys to watch it because uh, oh. you 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 guys you guys like those fungicides, and you <laughs> oh, it's like that. And you like your pussy cats? I think it looks oh, like a mix boy. between pussy cats oh, and fungicides. So. Oh no! <laughs> yeah, oh, boy! Baby. Wow. wow. Okay. Wow. All right. <laughs> Blackbird. 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 Okay, then. Black Blackbird. 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 Black. We can't do it synced up. Let's just quit. Buy a t-shirt. Black, black. Subscribe and, and like us and comment. Blackbird. 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 Store.meetingfromania.com. Listen up, maniacs. Do you have a question or a comment? Would you like to uh, send some bourbon to Uncle Lloydie? You can contact the gang on Facebook at B Movie Mania. You can also drop them a line at bmoviemania.com. Reach out, touch them. They are touching themselves, and they might just reach back. I'm Lloyd Kaufman saying, see you next time on B Movie Mania. Woohoo! Behind the scenes with Jay and Chris. Jay, how's it going? Chris, huh, it's good. 
Maybe not a classic, but damned if I'm not having fun listening as I edit. I mean, I'm also drunk. J. Jokes aren't solid? Chris. Oh no, the jokes are pretty good. You can tell we're having a really fun time talking about it. I don't know. I would say this is a fun one. J. I'm gonna do the image now. Chris. I think it's a solid app. No clue what I'm gonna do for the stinger, though. J. Eh, just put in a galgy sound. Chris. Yeah, that's my fallback. Maybe with the bleeps from the teaser. LOL. J. Just read this chunk of the conversation, record it, then stick that at the end. It's meta. Chris. Ha ha ha. Done. I'll see if Paul will read it. If he does, great. If not, I'll put Galgi sounds in. Well, I fucking read it, so there you go.